this is the video you guys have all been requesting apparently all right apparently this video please the best case for larry bird being the best basketball player of all time now you guys already know if you haven't seen watched my previous video on larry bird my current favorite player i had to give it to lebron all right growing up as a kid my favorite player was tracy mcgrady you know what i'm saying but my goat my goat i'm gonna have to go with jordan but we're gonna give this video a shot we're gonna listen you know what i'm saying we're gonna be open ears and just see what he has to say let's go basketball is special the size of the court and the lack of pads or helmets give fans the most intimate experience of a team sport that exists and because of the different styles that basketball allows for players develop their own distinct mm. identities and signature styles through their creativity flair and athleticism Oh and goodness. although no player succeeds alone, the scoring volume and two-way nature of the sport give individual stars a nearly unprecedented Hard. amount of control over the flow and outcome of a game. For this reason, players are constantly compared to their peers mm. and to the legends of the past in order to answer the most hotly contested question in the sport. Who's the greatest to ever do it? For many, the question is redundant. They believe in only one right answer. Their answer. Others might have their own personal stance, but acknowledge one or two alternatives. But I believe that there's much more nuance to the question of greatness and more answers to it than you might think. By my count, there are eight players in NBA history that have a substantial claim as the GOAT. Damn it's a subjective thing, though. I can't give you a definitive answer. All I can do is the make block the argument. heard around the world. So today, I'll Come be on. making the case for Larry Bird as the greatest basketball player of all time. Let's see. We know he nice now. We know he nice. Let's see. Come on. When it comes to basketball, Larry Bird is the smartest, clutchest player to ever play the game. Now, if you don't think that Larry Bird is the greatest basketball player of all oh, time, wow. you probably hate that I just said that. Those are the kind of talking head sport cliches that surely impact the game, but are impossible to empirically measure. Normally, I'd agree with you, but I think that when you talk about Larry Bird, you see those intangibles become real, palpable results. I wouldn't have said it if I didn't believe it. Mm -hmm. When Larry Bird was drafted by the Boston Celtics in 1978, the NBA needed saving. Attendance was in the toilet, the league had few marketable stars, cocaine addiction had several players in its grasp, and most damning of That's all, crazy. playoff games were being tape delayed. Pl now, I have heard about that the cocaine issue from way back in the day, but no one really has done like a deep dive into that. You know what I mean? Let's get back into it. Off games at the highest level of basketball were being put in the back seat for black and white movies and network reruns. That's wild. But rather than join the Celtics after being taken third overall, Larry Bird decided to return for his final year at Indiana State, a decision that would prove to be one of the most important in the history of the sport. Hmm. Bird's final year saw the Sycamores tear through college basketball, going 33-0 before the national championship game. Bird, Jeez. already claimed by the NBA's most historic and prestigious franchise, had established himself as the generational talent who would inherit the mantle of pro basketball. Wow. Indiana State's opponent in the national championship was Michigan State, captained by the immortal Irvin Magic Johnson. Yeah, about to say. The Sycamores lost the championship to the more talented Spartans in the highest rated game in the history of basketball at any level still to this day. What? The stage had been set. The next decade of basketball would be defined. That storyline is that storyline is perfect. He he could have went to the league, came back, went back to college, and then played Magic in one of the, the highest rated game of you know basketball of all time. That's that storyline is perfect. This day, the stage had been set. So it even the started next decade like, of basketball you know, would college, be defined the by the rivalry we started between college. the white hit that's from French fire. Lick and his Boston Celtics and the Black Magic and his Showtime Lakers. The rivalry between Bird and Johnson is entwined into the fabric of the NBA and is worthy of a hundred documentaries. In this video, though, we're going to be looking at Bird's claim Let's of supremacy. See. Here's Bird's basketball resume. Champions. His three championships come with perhaps the highest collective degree of difficulty of any player's championships. His three MVPs came consecutively, making him only the third player to accomplish the feat, along with Bill Russell and Wilt Chamberlain. His two finals MVPs are misleading. 
He was absolutely the best player on the 81 Celtics, but he was only a sophomore and his 15 points per game in the finals gave the media an excuse to exact a little vengeance on a legendarily difficult interview. Mm. His all-star and first team selections also come with the well, caveat that Bird only played for 13 seasons and missed all but six games of the 89 season following surgeries on both feet. Damn. I can hear you already. A 13-year career. That's and this short. guy is supposed to be the GOAT? What yeah. color of paint are you huffing, Clayton? <laughs> Green, obviously. But hear me out. Yeah, Bird's career lasted about two-thirds as long as it should have. But what he did in that time was so impressive and so substantial that every basketball fan acknowledges that he's in the conversation as the greatest ever. Mm. Doesn't it matter that those 13 years saved professional basketball, delivered a disproportionate amount of memorable moments, defined the golden age of the league, and produced a career by which all other forwards before or since are measured? Bird Damn. squeezed every drop of talent out in those 13 years and made it seem more like 30. He didn't just leave his fingerprints on the game. He left so much of his DNA in the sport that it needed a cigarette afterwards. Damn. There's something to be said about the Yo, candle what? that <laughs> like 30. He didn't just leave his fingerprints on the game. He left so much of his DNA in the sport that it needed a cigarette afterwards. Where you uh... There's something to be said about the candle that lasts half as long Damn. but burns twice as bright. Those three MVP years Bro. stack up with any other run by any other player. I will put an A-plus Larry Bird season up against anyone's. Uh, what does an A-plus Larry Bird season look like? A full box score, a blowout win, a nearly undefeated record at home, and a play style that could only be described one way, white. Larry Bird isn't mm -hmm. just a white basketball player, he's the white basketball player. To describe Larry Bird's game is to thumb through the hoops dictionary and pick out every cliche about white players. Unathletic, great shooter, good fundamentals, the whole thing. Mm. The archetype of a white basketball player is Larry Bird, with one exception. He had an unparalleled understanding of the game of basketball, both as a physical contest Jeez. and as a mental competition. His basketball IQ infected everything he did and catapulted his career into legend. Bird was a complete player. <laughs> Bird, Jerry West called fools. him nearly as perfect as you can get. He was the league's first great marksman. He was dope as a lot of his highlights are actually hustle plays. You know what I mean? Like he'll miss a shot and he'll go back up, get the rebound, do a whole bunch of pump fakes, basically destroy the defender and put it right back up. That's a grind, bro. Gotta respect that. Come on. It's called him nearly as perfect as you can get. He was the league's first great marksman. He could contort his body to shoot from anywhere on the court, regardless of the level of defense. Yeah, that was wild. He pioneered the art of the dagger three and was the founding member of the 50-40-90 club. At six foot nine, Bird's understanding of angles and coordination led to a higher rebounding average than Patrick Ewing, Hustling. and it made him an impressively adept finisher in his younger years. 86, Bird dropped left. 47 points on the Blazers, playing the majority of the game left-handed. His lack of quick lateral movement meant that Bird didn't do much when it came to slapping the floor and picking up the opposing point guard, but his size and omniscience gave him the ability to body similarly sized players, mm -hmm. read defenses like a free safety, and pick off passing Give me lanes that. with ease. His passing was transcendent, and I'll highlight it later. And of course you need to know that Larry Bird was a tough M effort. He passes almost like a, a point guard, you know, like, like a really at a high level point guard. Like his, his, his vision on the court is like, is dope. Highlight it later. And of course you need to know that Larry Bird was a tough M effort. He had a superhuman motor and dove for loose balls like a beagle at the park. He was a willing participant in his share of fights, often precipitated by his league renowned trash talk. Larry throwing hands. Stayed, he should have stayed in preaching. <laughs> that was funny. He had 50 points. I was guarding him. He laughed at me. He had 50 points. He looked at me and he goes, you can't stop me. And I looked at him and I said, gosh, boy, you're, you're so confident. He proceeded to score like 10 straight points on me. The coach took me out the game. He walks by and he's laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> he was a basketball genius. He'd be a step ahead, uh, a thought ahead. Uh, play the game like a chess game. Mm. I'd much rather guard Michael Jordan. Than Everybody Larry Bird says that too. You have to play the game as a thinker when you're playing. Yeah, you have Everybody to get inside says that. his mind. If you put all of us in a room, you know, Magic, Jordan, myself, and Bird, Bird probably be the guy who walks out of the room at the end of the day. Did you wow. notice something during those testimonies? 
And that's and that's Isaiah Thomas saying that. Detroit Pistons saying that. I'm talking about defense, defense, defense. That's crazy. The guy who walks out of the room at the end of the day. That's crazy. Did you notice something during those testimonies? Those are some of the best basketball players of, of all time. time. And they all sing birds' praises like they were former assassins who had to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with John Wick, and mm. they're just happy to be alive. Bird excelled during one of the most talent-rich periods in league history. The abridged list of his Damn. basketball rivals goes like this. Dr. J and Moses Malone on the Philadelphia 76ers, Sidney Moncrief on the Milwaukee Bucks, Isaiah Thomas, Bill Lambeer, Damn. and the Bad Boy Pistons, Dominique Wilkins on the Atlanta Hawks, Damn. Bernard King on the New York Knicks, Michael Jordan on the Chicago Bulls, wow, Hakeem bro. Olajuwon and Ralph Sampson on the Houston Rockets, and of course, the Magic Lakers? Johnson, James Worthy, bro, he had to and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on the Los Angeles the Lakers. All right, there's no point avoiding it any longer. We have to look at Magic versus Larry. That's if you have Magic stressful. over Larry, it's because he has five rings to Larry's three, had a peak that lasted about two mm. or three years longer than Larry's, mm -hmm. and had a two and one record against Bird Celtics in the finals. Perfectly legitimate, completely respectable Shh. arguments. But in the interest of making Bird's case, allow me to retort. For nearly the entire decade of the 1980s, the Eastern Conference was irrefutably the more competitive conference between the two. Considering the competition, for Bird to have made five finals appearances is sick. just as impressive as Magic's nine. As for the head-to-head -head record responsible for Magic's two extra titles, he had more help. Seriously, the Celtics' big three and the Lakers' big three get compared all the time historically as if they were of equal caliber, but weren't Magic's accomplices just a step above Bird's? No disrespect at all to Kevin McHale and Robert Parrish, but Kareem was the alpha dog on the 71 bucks. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know much about Kevin McHale, but I have heard I have heard his name a lot of people saying that he was nice. So listen, it is what it is. Come on. All to Kevin McHale and Robert Parrish, but Kareem Robert was the Parrish. alpha dog on the 71 bucks and was the best player for at least two of the Lakers' five titles. Damn. James Worthy was the number one pick out of UNC after winning a championship as the best player on a team that had Michael Jordan on it. Throw in the fact that Magic got Damn. to be coached by Pat Riley, one of Jeez. the most brilliant minds in basketball history, and you could say that the Magic Bird argument comes down to one thing, luck. So if their careers come down to luck, the question just becomes who you would rather take. Now, I'm not making this video to tell you why you shouldn't take Magic. I'm making this video to tell you why you should take Bird. Let's not go. just over Magic, but over everybody. One thing that helps he him is the fact people, that his bro. play would translate perfectly oh, into the league today. Whoa, a six foot whoa, nine shot that helps him is the on. fact that his play would translate Sir. perfectly into the league today. A six foot nine sharp shooting forward with eyes in the back of his head who averaged double digit rebounds in an era against Moses and Lambeer. Look at that. He'd gobble up boards as a power forward. We don't even see that no more. We don't even see see that no more bro that's what i was saying earlier a lot of his plays best plays is hustle plays that dude will get his own rebound put it back up put it back up put it back uh he don't quit today a six foot nine sharp shooting forward with eyes in the back of his head who averaged double digit rebounds this. in an era against One. moses and lambeer he'd Good gobble up boards as a power Give forward He'd be an offensive mismatch against everybody as a small late, ball sir. center and his off ball skills and passing would pair perfectly with the flow of today's game Add in his competitive mania and three generations worth of medical advancements, and we're talking about a player who could have stuck around so long they would have had to rename the league. As you've been watching these clips of Bird, yeah. I would hope that you Behind would notice the something. Back. He always Behind the back. Behind the back. court pass. Name the league. Between As you've been the watching fingers. these clips of Bird, I would hope that you would notice something. He always knows where everybody is. Watching Bird play basketball is like watching those monsters from a quiet place that know where you are if you make any noise at all. Bird had a level of clairvoyance that bordered on the unnatural. Look at In that. 85, he ended up one steal away from a quadruple double after playing just the first three quarters. Quadruple His double? Hold on. Only four NBA players have ever recorded a quadruple double. Nate Thurman, Alvin Robinson, Hakeem Olajuwon, and David Robinson. Not only that, but it has been 28 years since the last one further proving how difficult it is to achieve. So that's crazy. You got to credit that. For him to even get close to that is amazing. Let's get back to it. In 85, he ended up one steal away from a quadruple double after playing just the first three quarters. That's a nasty His stat, passing bro. was famously infectious and helped transform the Celtics of the 80s into an ideal that basketball teams at all levels are still shown tape of. They moved the ball with precision and intent, always looking for better shots and determined to get the entire team involved in the effort. 
That fact is almost entirely attributable to Bird and his wizardry with the ball. Mm. This acumen also helped Bird become the only player with a GOAT claim to transition successfully into other basketball yeah, roles after his playing career. In his three years Indiana. as the head coach of the Pacers, Bird won a Coach of the Year award, coached the Pacers to their first and only finals appearance, and gave Michael Jordan as much trouble as he'd ever gotten in his career in the 98 Eastern Conference Finals. Game seven. After moving into a front office role for Indiana, he won Executive of the Year in 2002. 12, becoming the only person to have an MVP, Coach of the Year, and Executive of the Year award. On the court or off of it, inside and out, Larry Bird sees basketball as only he can. That intelligence also lent itself to Bird's defining skill, making the big plays. Remember, NBA players get paid to win games. James Harden That's... is getting paid nearly $40 million this year because he's supposed to help the Rockets win games. Victory can be achieved in a lot of ways, and the win column doesn't care how it happens. As Mark Sinclair once said, It don't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning. Win's a win. But when your team is down one in a crucial playoff game with eight seconds left, and you need to hit a shot to stay in the series and keep your season alive, that's where players really separate themselves and earn their money. Oh, yeah. Love it or hate it, it's the players that come through in the big moments that live forever in our memories. Some players, for whatever reason, were never able to do it consistently. Mm. Some players were truly outstanding Game at it. Game time. Yeah, we, yeah I remember Larry that. Larry Bird was the best at it. So he's clutch too? I'm not going to give you the stats about his field goal shooting under two minutes with a score that's this close or tell you who has the most buzzer beaters or any of that. Take that for data. <laughs> I'm just going to show you. Clutch moments in clutch situations. 1985 against the Blazers. Bird drops 48 points, including this. Down one with two seconds left. The inbound pass to double team and Bird. Larry, fake, fall away. Hits it! The, the fadeaway? 1985 against the Hawks. Being double teamed? Bird sets the Celtics scoring record with 60 points with shots like these. They open the right side. Bird the fall away. Oh man, you can't you can't stop that though. 1986 what are you do? against the Rockets. Not all of Bird's clutch moments were singular. The bigger the moment, the bigger his performance. In Game Six of the 1986 NBA Finals, Bird clinches the championship with a triple double in what he calls the best game he ever played. Damn. 1987 against the Washington Bullets. Bird hits one shot to tie it before it's waved off because of a timeout. Hits another shot to tie it up for real. Crowd is standing up. It goes now to Bird. Another Bird three though. <laughs> and then in double overtime, down one, he does this. Another. How do you hit three clutch? For three years, from 1986 to 1988, the three-point contest knew no other champion but Larry Bird. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't know he could shoot that good. He got his jacket on. 1987 Eastern. Nah, 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 nah. He ain't taking his jacket off and won it. still gotta drop one here quickly. That's confidence, bro. The tie for the money. Yo. That's wild. 1987 Eastern Conference Finals, Game 5. Okay. Tied at two games apiece against the Bad Boy Pistons, this enormous game would put the winner one game away from the NBA Finals. The Pistons are up one with seconds remaining. The ball goes out of bounds off the Celtics. Isaiah Thomas just needs to inbound the ball to win the game. Now that's a Give me that. Uh-huh. He got hustle, man. Right? There are truly too many big games and big moments for me to go through without this ending up as a documentary. But that all leads me to this, Damn. what I really want to talk about. 1987, <laughs> NBA Finals, Game 4 <laughs> against the Lakers. LA is up two games to one, and the Celtics need to win to tie the series and stay alive. Mm. Bird hits a three with 12 seconds left to go up by two. Bird goes for three. I didn't know he could shoot that good. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I knew Green he comes nice, down and gets fouled with eight seconds left. I didn't know he shoot that good. He makes the first. Look, Kareem. But misses the second. LA ends up with the ball with seven seconds left, down one point. In the low post, being guarded by Dennis Johnson. Byron Scott is 
in the ball game now. Magic hits this, the baby sky hook. Oh, he hit, yeah, he hit that. That's a shot. Two seconds left. Down one. Dennis Johnson on the inbound. Bird fires it. What do you think happens? It looked good. Oh. I bet it wasn't that. When I paused the tape and the ball was hanging in the air, you thought it was going in. Bird thought it was going <laughs> right, in. Right, right. Magic thought it was going in. Damn. It looked like it was I've going seen in. this game before, and I still think it's going to go in. But it didn't. Pat Riley said it himself. We got lucky. Damn. And that, a missed shot in the NBA Finals is why he's the clutchest. Because after he makes the big plays, has the big games, hits the big shots, time and time again, you expect him to hit every shot, to win every game. And in those fleeting moments when he doesn't, when he looks like a mere human, when he looks like Damn. everyone else who tries to do what he does, you just can't believe it. That's what Larry Bird did. He made the big plays so often, you thought he was gonna make them every time. Damn. He helped turn basketball into a global phenomenon, paving the way for every Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, or LeBron James who comes through our lives. He played basketball in its purest form and captained a team that is consistently ranked among the greatest of all time. It he has true. the second highest win percentage in the history of the NBA, behind Magic by less than one half of 1%, about Damn. 10 games. He was the complete package, a player with no holes in his game whatsoever. They called him Basketball Jesus. <laughs> he didn't get that name without doing something extraordinary. He saved basketball, and he did it by playing it better than anyone else. Here's Magic at Bird's retirement in 1993. Larry Bird said that there will be another Larry Bird one day. And Larry, there will never, ever, ever be another Larry Bird. That's true, though. To, uh, to this day. Greatest basketball player ever, but more important, a friend forever. Cool. It's weird. Like, we hear about all, we hear about Jordan, we hear about. You know, Magic, we hear about, uh, you know, all the past legends, the Detroit Pistons, and and it's like, we don't really never hear about Larry Bird just growing up, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't know personally he could shoot that well. I didn't know he had that much grit. A lot of his highlights, him falling on the floor, going for the ball, going up for uh, offensive rebounds, attacking the basket, uh, and that's a lot of the things that we missed but we don't do, I guess, in basketball like anymore as much as we should be doing. I mean, um, but he was nice. He was nice.